to serious business. Um, Donald Tusk, the uh, Polish prime minister, has delivered a blunt warning. Uh, this is earlier today that Europe has entered a pre-war era and that if Ukraine is defeated by Russia, nobody in Europe will be able to feel safe. And he says this. I don't want to scare anyone, but war is no longer a concept from the past. Uh, it's real and it started two years ago. Now, his remarks come as a fresh barrage of Russian missiles targeted Ukraine. Russia has intensified its bombardment of Ukraine in recent weeks, and Ukraine's air force said it had shot down 58 drones and 26 missiles. Uh, and Prime Minister uh, uh, Denis uh, Shimhal uh, said energy infrastructure had been damaged in six regions uh, in the west, uh, centre and east of the country. Now, Mr Tusk is a former president of the European Council, and he said that Russian uh, President Vladimir Putin had already blamed Ukraine uh, for the jihad attack on Moscow's uh, Crocus City Hall without any evidence and evidently feels the need to justify increasingly violent attacks on civil targets in Ukraine. His words. He also pointed out that Russia had attacked Kyiv with hypersonic missiles in daylight for the first time earlier this week. Now, he says that regardless of whether Joe Biden or Donald Trump uh, wins in November in the US presidential election, he has argued that Europe would become a more attractive partner to the US if it became more self-sufficient militarily. So look, Donald Tusk, former Polish, uh, uh, well, for, he's current Polish prime minister, but also former president of the European Council, a big figure in European politics, is saying, I don't want to scare anyone, but the war is no longer a concept from the past. It's real and it started over two years ago. And unless unless Putin is tackled, no one will feel safe. So my question to you is this. Is Donald Tusk right or is he simply warmongering? Is Donald Tusk right or is he warmongering? 0345 6060973. You can text on 84850 or ask Alexa to send a comment to LBC. I'll be giving you my thoughts on that in a few moments. Uh, but first... Uh, let's get uh, a view from uh, Colonel Hamish de Breton Gordon, uh, defence commentator who served as commander of both uh, UK and NATO chemical, biological, radiological and nuclear threat units. Um, very good afternoon to you, uh, Colonel de Breton Gordon. Thank you for joining me. Um, what do you make of Donald Tusk's intervention today? Good afternoon, Ali. Well, I think he's a he's absolutely right. And the fact that you have to ask the question to, to the audience of whether he's right or warmongering, I think is actually at the root of the problem. Now, sure, Poland and Donald Tusk are much closer um, to the Russians than we are. But when you, I absolutely agree everything he says, if Russia prevails in Ukraine, we will all be at war. And when you look at, um, we, we know about the Moscow attack the other day, which we're still not entirely sure who's responsible, Putin's sham election. Putin announced two new armies, over 100,000 each, when you think that we're struggling to put an army of 70,000 into the field. And only today, Russia has announced a massive uh, conscription um, line of tens of thousands of people. Now, that is somebody preparing um, to extend this war. I think Tusk and others have said we're in a pre-war phase, which I agree with. When you're in a pre-war phase, you need to make sure your military is up to it. And the key thing is that the conventional military deterrence, which Europe and the UK has, is not sufficient to hold Putin at the moment. So I think Tusk is right. We, we probably have a year two at the very most to make sure that we have a military that will hold Putin where he is now rather than have to fight him in, in, in the streets and valleys of Europe as we did the previous um, dictate tyrant to um, come westwards in Europe, Hitler. Uh, Colonel, do you not think, though, that uh, the West has been talking a good game on all of this, but it's failed to really uh, not. Well, you could argue I was going to say put its money where its mouth is. It has put quite a lot of money where its mouth is, but it's certainly not putting munitions where its mouth is, because whilst uh, Europe, the EU, has given 60 odd billion euros uh, to Ukraine in recent weeks, we know that uh, the 60 odd billion uh, in the uh, US is holed up in Congress at the moment. And we don't know what's going to happen if Donald Trump uh, comes to power. It looks like uh, he's going to be a lot less supportive to Ukraine than Biden. Uh, do you think that the West has failed 
absolutely to get its economies on a war footing and to provide Ukraine the munitions it so desperately needs? Well, it, it has failed to provide the ammunition and munitions that, that you, Ukraine needs. That, a, a, absolutely. But, but you'll know better than I. There's so many competing uh, uh, draws on that. And of course, there are elections all over the place. But the reality is, if Ukraine doesn't prevail, and at the moment, Russia has six artillery shells for every one Ukraine has. If they don't prevail and we don't give them the wherewithal to do it, then we are going to have to fight. And in order to prevent the war in Europe, we must prepare for it and, and enable Ukraine. So it's, I know it's very easy for me to sit in my armchair back in Wiltshire saying this, but, but that is the reality. And I think people in this country, and I think Donald Tusk is trying to galvanize people in Poland, but I think they're far more on the front foot here, that actually, you know, wh whatever the, the cost of living crisis and the temperature of the planet if we are involved in a war in Europe in the next year or so, that those things could be horrifically irrelevant. Therefore, the 2% or 2.2% we are spending on defence, remember the Russians are spending over 6% on defence, and the rest of Europe is barely spending 2%. Actually, you know, I agree with Tusk. That is probably not enough. We need a conventional defence deterrent that holds the Russians. And at the moment, it's not doing that. What do you make of the uh, recent polling conducted by the European Council on Foreign Relations uh, just a couple of months ago that suggested that only 10% of voters think Ukraine can win and some 37% thought that a compromise was most likely and 19.5% thought that Russia would actually win in the end? Not exactly a ringing endorsement of what people in Europe are thinking about all of this. Well, I, I know. Uh, I mean, it, it's pretty shocking. Uh, and of course, people in Poland and Germany are far closer to it than us and, you know, will suffer far more than we, we will I I in a war. Um, I think people are, you know, are really sticking their heads in the sand here and it's easier to worry about other things. And I absolutely get it. If you can't afford to put, put food in the mouths of your children, uh, spending billions on weapons does seem pretty puerile. But, but the basic fact is, and you know, you only have to look back to the Second World War and see what, what, what Hitler got up to and what we we had to do. And then we absolutely had the Americans supporting us to hold them. We might not have the Americans, you know, come November or come ja January 2025. And um, the reality is absolutely. So I think we really need to galvanize ourselves and put our put our finances behind it, because the last thing we need is a war in Europe with the Russians. If we can prevent it by flexing our military muscles, and that's that's what Putin recognizes. He he recognizes strength, uh, and he he will go at weakness. And at the moment, he just sees weakness in Europe. So I'm afraid we've really got to muscle up here on the military front in order to try and prevent war in Europe, which at the moment is a possibility. And quick word on uh, Emmanuel Macron uh, becoming increasingly belligerent in his tone in recent weeks. It looks like the German Chancellor Olaf Scholz and Emmanuel Macron, the French president, are not on the same page. Uh, Emmanuel Macron hinted that uh, the EU uh, or there could be European boots on the ground in Ukraine itself, something that uh, has not been considered so far, very deliberately not considered so far. Uh, do you think that actually Macron is onto something and this is now an existential threat to Europe and we should be prepared to go that step further? Well, I, I think what I do agree with Macron is we shouldn't take NATO or European boots on the ground in Ukraine off the table. Because if we do, that hands the advantage to Putin. If he, if he doesn't think he's going to see any you know, European jets or, or British tanks in Ukraine, then that will, that will affect his decision making and allow him to push on. So I, I, th I agree with Macron. We, we, we should say, yeah, there, is, there, will, there are scenarios that we will put um, British fighter jets, British tanks and European tanks into Ukraine to stop uh, Russia, if that is the best way of doing it. But to just take it off the table, as so many European leaders have done, to me is, is you know, it's just, you know, I, I'm no great, you know, grand political strategist, but I know a little bit about military strategy. Mm. Uh, and it is about showing a strong front. So Macron, in this case, I think he's got something.